welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program episode. And today we are finishing off Moonbase 1, which we started on last episode. And today I also got a new microphone, so hopefully my voice will be clearer and there will be less background noise and yeah, less uh, uncomfortable noises. So I hope this new microphone works fine. I'm still experimenting a little bit with it and I'm also doing the editing in this movie in Final Cut Pro a trial version to see if it is something I'm willing to buy for future editing but enough of that and let's get to today's episode so to start off with we are sending the first uh, compartment to be docked on the side of the moon base and uh, I muck about quite a lot with the cameras here so I clipped away some of uh, all the weird stuff I've done and tried to leave you guys with what made sense. I am not sure what I was thinking when I was recording this one but we're also sending the next part which is this one. These are two identical pieces but they are two pieces and they are traveling to the moon at the same time as we did last episode to try to minimize the weight between uh, the craft. So we just saw Chrono Station flying by, the blue one uh, right there. We can see it flying past us 10 kilometers away. So Kronos is still up and going and getting ready to be uh, made as a refueling station for our deep space missions. But yeah, we are now uh, approaching the moon. I just skipped us uh, forward because we don't need to see the whole time warp. Uh, but they're coming in pretty close. They're like half an hour apart. So it was a good thing they were that much apart so we could get time to circularize the orbits and uh, get them ready to land on the moon. And they're not going to dock with anything either like uh, in the last episode we're just circularizing them like close enough and we are going to send them down to the moon's surface after that so that was the first one circularized and we're switching to the second one to get it circularized too and um, yeah you can see they're coming in pretty close so that's a good timing um, pretty happy with uh, how everything went so far um, but uh, yeah, uh, approaching the moon and we are going to have our base up and running by the end of this episode and we can continue our extracting keythane. Now our keythane uh, base has broken in uh, the upgrade from O20 and uh, the upgrade uh, to the keythane base or the keythane mod but um, I'm going to fix that off camera I think if uh, that's okay it's just that uh, the mods have some new parts and there's a huge lag over at the keythane base as of now so it's kind of useless uh, even the kerbals just keep falling over on the ground because uh, there's such a huge lag that they don't uh, realize they're on the ground but enough of that for now we are landing our uh, first part close to the base so just aiming for our canyon where we've been drilling for keythane and filled up uh, well in the meantime between these two episodes we filled up the refueling truck and you can see I'm coming in a little too hot here because I was aiming for the keythane base as it would have been perfect landing if I were supposed to land on the keythane base but I weren't so uh, I had to fly over to the base but this this one compared to uh, the last one we landed in the last episode is a lot easier to fly so yeah we sped this up to four times so you don't have to see the whole landing that would take four times as long whoa good math yay clap for me no, uh, but uh, yeah, we are landing this uh, pretty close to the base uh, and we're going to get rid of the debris uh, after this So because there was building up so much of this debris that it's going out on our um, frame rate a little bit and also when I'm switching crafts we are uh, 
I'll keep uh, hitting the the debris so uh, I pretend we're sending the Kerbals over and they get uh, the debris away in after this episode so yeah we're driving in the new cupola I think it's pronounced and uh, it is a nice driving view it's really um, a beautiful cop cockpit for uh, driving around now try not to drive too fast because above uh, like 10 meters per second I kept falling over so driving this uh, first part I think I crashed it once uh, but uh, Except from that, it went pretty well, but it keeps flying around a little bit because the gravity is not so high and I was impatient and driving a little fast. But yeah, this is a great view uh, to watch from when you're driving around on the moon. And I'm starting to look around for the base because I was like, yeah, it's supposed to be here somewhere close. It was just like a kilometer away. And I can see something white in the distance and I'm thinking maybe that's the top of the base and that it was and it's a pretty nice view coming over the edge and seeing our base here standing on this flat area with the lights on and there's our flag which I found out will uh, probably be a good marker for landing on in the future now it's a little front heavy as you just saw so it keeps like um, uh, trying to oh what is the word um, well I don't remember the word but the back end keeps uh, flipping up so I'm turning off the front engines which gives us more traction on the back and it doesn't flip over so yeah the front the cupola is pretty uh, front heavy so that uh, had to be accounted for and we also put some ladders on this so that uh, the Kerbals can uh, walk down on the ground and climb back up again but yeah that's our first um, first part docked and we're sending down the second one uh, now the flight time uh, between I think uh, them leaving Kerbin's uh, or their orbit around Kerbin and landing was like within the they were landing like half an hour between each other and uh, yeah it took a really short time so if this was the real life Na NASA been doing this I, it would be really impressive because this went straight off uh, straight after each other so yeah, this landing is coming in pretty hot. Uh, I ran out of fuel in the uh, braking uh, stage or the transfer stage. So I'm flying on the landing engines a little longer than I anticipated. And we end up with this beautiful landing. And I slowed it down and I think the sound it makes is just great. So. Let's try it out one more time. Uh, we're doing a bit more suicide burn this time instead of having the engines on for control. And uh, hopefully that will leave us with enough fuel to land. But we have to do it this suicide uh, style. So well, almost suicide style. But uh, we can see the fuel is running down pretty fast. And we are approaching the ground a little too quickly but we managed to kill the velocity exactly at the right time so i think we popped one wheel when doing this the one front wheel so but this is a good thing we had a curl on board he fixed it and we flew our, over to the base again now this is driving but sped up four times this time so it goes a little faster because we don't need to see the driving in real time two times it's not that exciting to see me driving around on the moon I think so we sped this up to four times again and we are now docking to the base so this flipped uh, one time I think when driving two and had a huge explosion but I lost the crash so I'm sorry I was a little hasty I got a little annoyed by myself and pushed the delete button a little too quickly but yeah, that's our base complete. Uh, ladders out, lights on, and 
almost everything done. There's one part I'm going to connect in the future, but it's nothing important. It is a communication tower, and that's why we have the docking port on top. But I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, so we'll leave it for there for now. So yeah, this is the Artemis station, we haven't forgot it, and it, as of now, there are two transfer uh, buses, or taxis that are more like, since they're just holding three Kerbals, and two landers connected to it. So now we are going to send some uh, crew down to the ground and start filling up our uh, moon base. So undocking the first crew and you can see there's some lag at the Artemis station now and well yeah it's a pretty big station so why not but we get these beautiful views of Kerbin in the background as we do our breaking burns. Now I've decided for the um, crew lander capsules and uh, the crew transfers between Kerbin and uh, the Artemis station will be done with um, the mechanical jab autopilot because this is supposed to be like an everyday thing for these astronauts it's going to be like taking uh, the the train to uh, where you're going to work for a couple of weeks before you take the train back home so they are just sitting back relaxing and I can get some of these nice shots as the mechanical jab is working on landing this thing and the second reason I wanted to do this with the mechanical jab, uh, except from leaving me to get these nice views, is that uh, it can save some fuel for this landing, because I've done it a couple of times, and if I hit it right, I use less fuel than mechanical jab, but if I do it wrong, I use more fuel. So, to give it some consistency and being on the safe side, we are going to use mechanical jab for this but we are approaching the the landing site at uh, really slow and uh, calm pace and the astronauts you can see are pretty relaxed this is nothing they are all calm and uh, trusting that the crew on the ground has calculated their, la their landing to the exact uh, point and speed and we can see the base right underneath us as we come down and right now I'm a little worried that we're going to hit the station so I switched to this camera and crossed my fingers that we were not going to crash with the moon base but it would give us a nice camera angle for our landing so doing the braking for our landing next to the station I'm really crossing fingers and there we can see the station getting close turning on the landing lights to see the distance to the ground and we landed pretty close to the flag that is a pretty good landing next to the flag so yeah the next uh, crew module uh, I do mess around with the camera a bit because I can't decide how to do it but I decide to show you like this the whole way anyway so uh, trying to orientate it and I decided to land this uh, a little bit to the side so it doesn't land on top of the other module and hopefully it doesn't land on the base either so we can see we're coming down over the base getting a nice camera angle and hoping we are not going to hit it so yeah this time you got to see a little bit more of how the landing went and touchdown so yeah, now we can get rid of the, the crew has uh, entered the station and we're just sending the landers back to the Artemis uh, station. Now my original idea was for this was to uh, like have the landers standing next to the base and all the crew outside. But I forgot. So after sending up the crew we had to do some uh, new shots with the crew but uh, trying to get the mechanical jab uh, ascent pilot to find uh, or try to find the right uh, path for the ascent uh, pilot to find our way up and get as close to the Artemis station as possible now there's been a couple of times uh, that we went 
Well, last time we were almost out of fuel, as you saw. That was with the same lander too, so... This time we hopefully have some more fuel, or we'll have to make some new landers. And we get this pretty nice shot from the canyon that we've been digging Keithane from, and the crater in the background. So, as we get into orbit, we get another nice shot of Kerbin in the background, and we are getting pretty close to the Artemis station, but I'm going to skip the docking this time and leave the lander uh, at this point to rendezvous and do the rest of the job itself. And we also send up the other lander. But right now we have to take a look at the crew, so let's take a look and see how they're doing. And I tested out the Kerbal camera to see if I could animate it going around. And it's okay, I guess. I need some practice on doing some paths. But this is our five manned, no, uh, seven manned crew that's down at the station so far, or base actually. And they're all pretty happy for being the first crew to man this. And in the future, we can fill this up pretty much uh, with like 50 Kerbals. But we are not going to do that now. In a later episode, they are going to get a couple of vehicles to drive back and forth between their jobs. And I decided to do the doc uh, show you the docking anyway, because, uh, well, I wanted this episode to get a little bit closer to 20 minutes than it did. Uh, so we are doing this at four times uh, time acceleration again, well, in post-editing, not in the gameplay. And I'm just using the targeting uh, maneuver for mechanical jab and flying in. And it was, a, it was actually a pretty good um, approach. We came in at, uh, at the side, as you can see. And it was just getting aligned with the ports and going straight for it. And uh, we're going to put some more Kerbals in the, la the landers and send one more uh, set of crew down there, I think. But that should be good enough for uh, now to man the Keithane station, uh, Keithane base, which we'll have to remake in the next episode. But before we can send some more landers, we have to get some more crew. So undocking the, let's call them the space taxis, and sending them back to Kerbin. There are now a uh, total three space taxis in the circular station. That will go back and forth between the moon and Kerbin to send our Kerbals back in from work. So after a couple of nice shots of them leaving the station, it is time to end this episode and I hope you enjoyed this episode and that uh, I've been able to record um, okay with my new microphone. There's uh, I have to get used to uh, where I'm supposed to talk from and how to do it. So, hope to see you guys next time, and uh, bye. <laughs>